everyone about trust. In Psalms 37 and 3, it reads, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily shalt thou be fed. And as I meditated on this scripture, as I've done over some time, as I mature in God, it meant more. And so just the word trust, to lean on, rely on, and be confident. And so God gave me the vision of going for a job. And when you go for a job and you accept the assignment, you then go to work and you start to make provisions in your household with your kids, how things are set up, because you believe that if you do these things that are required of you for this job, you get a paycheck. So you believe in that promise that the job has made you, even without you having any signs that they're going to pay you on payday. You begin to do things, you begin to prepare yourself, you show up on time, you do and you learn skills to be able to fulfill the job that's required for you, all of these things in hope to receive the promise of the paycheck at the end of the week and two weeks. How about we turn that and trust in God for his promise? Doing the things that he's called us to do. Praying, seeking his face, reading the word that he's given us, coming together and fellowshipping. So right now, I pray that our our energy that we put into a menial thing like a job, yes. we can ramp it up for the things of God. Yes. Amen. We can trust yes. that if we do the things yes. that he tells us to do, then we receive his promises because he said so. Yes. And we have the instructions. It said, trust in the Lord and do yes. good. Yes. It said, just trust me and do good. Yes. And we shall we inherit these things. We shall dwell in the land. We shall be thoroughly be fed. Yes. Amen. Yes. If you receive that the word, begin to praise God. Father God, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We trust you, oh God. So we bless you, God. We open up our mouth and we say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We trust you, oh God. You are the true and living God. And we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Deuteronomy 16 and 15 says, For the Lord your God, will bless you in all your harvest and in all the work of your hands and your joy will be complete. Let me read that again. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all your work of your hand and your joy will be complete. There's nothing too hard for God, men and women of God. There's nothing too hard for God. For the Lord your God will bless you. I know you've been waiting on God to heal, deliver, set free. He's going to do it. If you receive that, bless the Lord. We thank you, oh God, in advance. We thank you in advance. Hallelujah, because you said you will do it. You said you will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. God says, you know my name is Jehovah Jireh. You know I will provide. God took me to Psalm 139 when David said, I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind and you're there, Lord. And then up ahead and you're there too. God is your provider. Wherever you are today, and I stand here as a living testimony, he will meet you where you are. Just give your trust in him. Remember that he never leave you in forsaken you. Remember the promises of the Lord. He is Jehovah Jireh. If you know him as Jehovah Jireh, give him a hallelujah praise of God.
Ghost. I'm your host for the day. Manifestation of the Spirit to profit without. So far, the text. Today, we're going to talk about the same Spirit, same Savior, and same God. We work for the same person, but we're so different. And we must embrace it. This is a problem that plagued. Y'all can take your seats. This is a problem that plagued the church early on. That's what sparked these whole letters right here. They got back to power that they were showing out. <laughs> Doing all kind of things. And what I love and respect about our bishop, think about what he calls us. He calls us all ambassadors. See, they didn't teach them that all of us was gifted from the get-go. There was only a few if you're licensed or you're ordained, right. or you're a deacon. That's right. If you have a title, that means you're the only one that can do anything. That's right. And that was a problem. Yeah. And Bishop understands, if you're going to start a church out, you got to start it out on the right foundation. Yeah. All right. So everybody in here has a gift, hey. has a talent. Hey. We all have somebody we can reach. Yeah. You can get up here and say something, and reach 100 people that I can't reach. And guess Amen. what? I'm going to push you to do it because we gain them for the kingdom. Amen. It's not for self-glorification. And it's the heart of the Father. It's God's will. We have Paul talking to them. You got to understand that came out of idolatry. Before we found the Lord, where was we at? I ain't gonna tell my whole story, but hey, I know where I was at. <laughs> I knew the Lord, but I knew where I was at before I actually got to the Lord. And when I found God, this is the happiest I've ever been. You know that song, Living My Best Life? Yeah. How can you live your best life when you don't know the Lord? Yeah. So he's talking to people that came out of idolatry. You have two coaches, really, a culture class. You have Jews and you have the Greeks. In one place. Learning about the Father. Yes. So there's going to be differences. But see, as I begin to study the text, it wasn't over theology, it was over personalities. Personality. Can I say that we can cause each other to act like fools? Yeah. It's not acting a fool about the Lord, but uh -huh. how we think a person should present Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about all the denominations and the splits. Mm -hmm. You have the Baptists. They're going to take it to the cross. Yeah. They're going to take it to the cross. Yeah. They got the Pentecostal. They're going to speak in tongues. They're going to shout. They're going to jump. They're going to make sure you feel with the Holy Spirit. And then you have the Methodists. They believe in theology. They believe if you're going to get on this pulpit, you're going to be educated. But see, all of that is correct, but all of them are the body. So what did that leave the body of Christ? Right. All of the body, but all of the body. That's why I like the rockets here. Because we believe in all of it. We're going to take it all. We're going to put it back the way it was before man decided we're going to do this. this way. Even when you think about the Catholics, the Catholic has 
order and structure. Yeah. That's right. All right. They march in a certain way. Yeah. They wear their robes a certain way. That's right. They understand the importance of colors. Yes. They understand the importance of position. Yeah. It's not that you're better, but you're in that position for a reason. Yeah. All right. Can't leave the Catholics out. <laughs> but see, it's not just idolatry, customs. It's fighting amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. How can we love the Lord, but you don't love the person sitting right next All to you? Right. All right. All right. You read every single letter. Because we in 12, but you got to go back to chapter 1. Come on. See, it's a whole lot of stuff on. He talks about adultery, adultery. He deals with everything, but I'm just tasked to deal with gifts. But see, you have to understand the whole picture of the beginning of what's going on. Amen. Insecurity. All right, guys. Insecurity. Yeah, you take yeah. five preachers with big egos and have them preach on the same night. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they're going to be battling right. each other versus right. different right. people. Right. 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 I want to take us back to um, First Chronicles, second chapter to look at something. We're going to deal with the Bible and show you what's going on. And we're going to use Paul as an example. <laughs> and I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with ecstasy of speech or wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything amongst you. You know why he said that, right? Because a man named Apollos. Y'all heard of Apollos? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent in speech. He took over after Paul. So what Paul was saying, when I came to you, I came to you talking about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I came to you talking about crucifixion. I came talking to you about an internal power, but when Apollos came, very versed in the, in the text, he came bringing the wisdom aspect. Yeah. Right. He came in bringing an understanding of philosophy. Mm. So you cannot base my teachings yeah. on his teachings. Mm. Right. What did he say? I planted yeah. Apollos' words. Yeah. Right. Two teachers teaching at the same church. But you have people saying, Am I for Apollos? Am I for Paul? Am I for Peter? All right. Think about Peter. Peter was cutthroat teacher. Can you imagine Peter teaching? Look, Peter in there like that. Either get with God or get rolled off. So that's how Peter was teaching. Y'all weren't there, but I'm catching you off the top of my head. speak with power, and he's going to paint a picture with authority. Yes. And then you have another person that's worried about what's dwelling on the inside. All right. Come on. But they're talking about one Lord. One Lord. Yeah. One God. Yeah. And one spirit. Yeah. And here we are, talking about who's the better teacher. Woo. We're going to follow. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Think about like what's different between me and Ambassador Bailey. I think about what's different between me and let's say Anton Bailey or Douglas or anybody that I've heard talk, teach, or do anything. When I think about that, I love the fact that we are different. Yes. And I wouldn't have it no other way. How can we be wonderful? How can we be powerful if we're trying to be like our neighbor? Yeah. But see, they didn't have a revelation yet. Right. They didn't have an understanding of who they were as people. <laughs> they didn't understand that they was being taught so that they can go out and be leaders. And that's what we're trying to do here at the Rock ATL. Yeah. We're trying to teach you how to be the best leader yes, in your field. Yes. 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 You're playing the bathroom, playing the bathroom like nobody else. Right. 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 What's going to happen? One day the boss is going to walk by. He's going to the bathroom always clean. He's going to start talking to you. Yeah, and he's right. going to find out that you're a man or yeah. woman of God. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to start talking to you more and more and more. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're going to go from being the janitor to working with the maintenance crew. Oh, and you yeah. might go from working for the maintenance crew to working in management. You never oh, yeah. Clean it with yeah. Clean it with pride. Yeah. And dignity. Yeah. Yeah. You might be the groundskeeper. Yeah. It don't exactly. matter. Whatever God has you, he has you there to meet needs to hear that there is 
an answer. Yes. There is salvation. Yes. There's a thing called the blood yes. that never ends, that never runs out. Amen. But see, you have to know mm -hmm. who you are and what your gifts are. We're getting ready to start back up a teaching that we was doing before we stop. Uh, me and my mom created a, a manuscript and tea title. We're getting ready to kick that back off. We're getting ready to start ministering and tests again for those that don't because we don't want you to be. That's why I started off with the first verse. I have you not ignorant, my brothers and sisters. Come on, right. come on. We're not right. starting off like other churches. Yes. 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 We're all ambassadors. Yes. 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 That's right. Some are apostles. Mm -hmm. That's right. Some are prophets. Come Some are evangelists. Some are pastors. Yes. Pastors, yes. Teachers. Yes. It yes. don't matter. Yes. Guess what? If you're an excellent teacher, I'm going to let you have it. You know what I'm saying? If you're an excellent intercede, I'm going to let you have it. I'm not trying to combat with you, compete with you, talk down on you, um, destroy you, pick your things apart. But see, this is what I love about what was going on at the time. When you understand the Jews, what did the Jews understand? Signs and wonders. If there was a, not a sign and wonder, God did not call you. That sounds like today's church. All oh, that was good, but show me something. Mm -hmm. Show me, show me, show me. Mm -hmm. Then you're dealing with the Greeks, the founders of philosophy. They want new ideas. Yes. Right. That's good, but did it plant a new idea in my head? Right. That was good, but did it actually tell me how I'm going to put food on my table? Right. That was good, but my kid is going to school, walking to school because I have to leave early. He got holes in the bottom of his shoes. Is that going to repair the bottom of his shoes? Mm -hmm. Come on now. All right. That was good, but did it stretch my mind? Yes. comes from nowhere but heaven. Yes. Amen. What about it being able to put food on your table? Yes. What about it that makes you love your neighbor? Mm. Mm. It has to come a point where it's enough is enough. Um, yeah. The leader of black, uh, the director of black men in power, um, Apostle Youngblood, put some on the page yesterday, but I seen it today. And it was powerful. I was sitting in there, I was reading it. He said, how are you saying you're still angry? All right. How are you so gifted but still upset? Yeah. How are you so gifted but still so lost? Wow. Come on, bro. I was talking to my mom last night and I seen a video and the dude took a piece of coal. I'm gonna give y'all some free stuff and you can make money if you give it like that. He took a piece of coal, wrapped it in peanut butter put it in ice, and then did some other stuff to it. And when he took it out and peeled it out, there was a crystal underneath. Wow. I told my mom, you can go to the store with $20 to your name and buy crystals. And then go over to the store and get the same elastic band that made these, drill a hole through it, and make you some crystal necklaces, and with $20, make you a couple hundred dollars. Now that's free game. Yeah. Now you get no more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding and knowing what's in us. Yeah. Getting yeah. information. And then taking the information and doing better. Yeah. That's what we're about. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that we have a bishop that believes in us. Yeah. That pushes us. Yeah. It's going to make us excel. Yeah. It's going to not allow us to get stagnated just like Paul. That's what Paul was doing. I'm not going to let you. It's not about what he did. It's about what the Lord did. I'm not going to allow anybody around me to tear down what God is trying to do. If you got people in your life that's tearing down what God's trying to build, it's time to move on. Amen. I don't care if you got your last name. Yeah. It's time to move on. Yeah. That's Bible talk. Yeah. Yeah. Same God. Same Lord. Same Spirit. He was talking about the Trinity. That in order to understand your gifts, you have to be able to receive all of them and understand all of them. Yeah, you know God, but do you let the Spirit dwell in you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. You know Jesus, but do you forget the Father? Mm -hmm. We're to honor our Savior, but to always reverence the one who created us. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some people, you never hear them talk about God. It's always Jesus. I know Jesus is our Savior, mm -hmm. but without God, you would have no Jesus. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, you just want to forget the other one. Let somebody step on your shoes right now. The Holy Spirit will jump out of you. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. You ready? Put some 
it belongs to the Asians. Right. But it's in the black community. That's right. Mm -hmm. Go to the white communities, guess what you're going to see? You're going to see clinics that help you have babies. Mm -hmm. That's what they're there for, to help people that struggle with kids, having kids. They're going to inject you, they're going to give you the best treatments. But when you go to the black communities, what do you see? Abortion clinics. Come on. Huh. What I'm trying to say to you, in their neighborhoods, they're promoting life. Mm. But in our neighborhood, they're promoting death yeah, and destruction yeah, because we don't know who we are. Yeah. 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 And we allow them to go on. Yes, it is. Sitting up last night, and I was thinking about true happiness. When I was thinking about talking to us about gifts, you know, your gift will really bring you happiness. Yeah, it does. It does. It's not money. You know why? Because as long as you get it, money is nothing. Right. Money is nothing once you understand what your gift is. Right. Yeah. Understanding your gift is getting over the hump. Yeah. So I, I'm going to suggest that if money is the issue, really look at your skills, yeah. look at your craft and see where you're out there. And once you find where you're out there, your money will decrease. I guarantee it. It's not money, it's your skills. Mm. When you understand your gift, that's when you find happiness. Mm. I'm gonna tell you about a Chinese slave. There was a dog that thought happiness was in his tail. And it chased his tail. See, when you want somebody else's gift, that's what you're doing. Mm. You're running in a circle fast and ain't going nowhere. Oh, yeah. They're tearing up the carpet and ain't got nothing to repair it. Mm -hmm. You're running yourself ragged. You don't know why you ain't got But see, one thing about the dog, the dog realized that hey, I can't catch happiness. But when I start to move in my purpose, mm -hmm. when I start to walk in what God gave me, happiness yeah. followed me. Yeah. All the days of my life. All right. When you get in your own lane, your happiness will follow you. Yes, yes, it will. The dog even noticed once it started wagging his tail. He was like, happiness is starting to shake some stuff up in my life. <laughs> I woke up depressed. And when I got on my path and started walking, happiness started shaking the depression out. See, I woke up sick, but when I understood who I was, and my tail started to wag, sickness started to flee from my body. Yeah. Yeah. See, when the dog had a revelation right. of what real happiness was, he started to walk in his ability. Mm. And one of the abilities of dogs is how they walk. You ever see how dogs walk? Mm. They back legs touch where their front legs touch. Mm -hmm. They learn to walk in their ability. That's something like what God said, right? When you're weak, I carry you. Oh, so I'm trying to get you to see a bigger picture. Yes, sir. Dogs walk just like Jesus said, I carry you. Mm -hmm. Wherever my foot step, you step in there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Allow me to relieve pressure off your life. Don't run in circles. Just follow the path God has put in front of you. Because I promise you, happiness will follow you all the days of your life. But you must be content with your gifts. You must let your security go. I was talking to Major. Well, we had a class about two weeks ago. And I was just playing for me because it's only for me and how I deal with stuff. How I'm so, I can let stuff go so easy. Because see, I know my giftings. Amen. And I know the workings of God and I understand the workings of the enemy. Mm. And just like Apostle Young would say, how can I be saved and ain't want? How can I be saved and not know that I'm gifted? How can I be saved and not know that I'm blessed? How can I be saved and not talk with authority? Mm. How can I be saved and not love? Anybody. Come on. How can I be saved and not follow the will of God? Mm -hmm. It's an eternal thing. Yes. It's a self-love thing. Yes, See, when you love yourself, yes. you dig deeper inside yourself. Yes. How many people seen um what's that book? The, the, was it The Cab in the Shack, whatever? How many of y'all read the book and seen the movie, The Shack? The Shack, yeah. My wife just recently started reading it. I got to let her get through before I can talk to her about it. But there's a part But the father, you know he's looking for his daughter, right? Right. He goes to the garden. Guess what he said? This garden is raggedy. But you know what that garden was? It turned out to be his soul. Yeah. Wow. See, we're looking at things and calling it raggedy. But what we're looking
looking at is a reflection of what's going on inside of us. See, when you let your gifts work, you begin to work on what's really rapid. Mm -hmm. Because, see, you view things differently. I did teach this a while ago when I was saying that I could look across the street and see hustlers, but I don't see hustlers. I look at them, I see businessmen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see That's entrepreneurs. Right. But see, That's to right. a carnal mind, you see thugs. That's right. You see killers. Right. I look across the street, I see businessmen. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Hackers, cyber criminals. Now I can see people that are very smart. I see people that are lost. Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, it's That's all right. about how you look at things like this. I look at a crazy man and say he's crazy. I look at a man and see that he's afflicted with demons. And where are the people that stay silent your mouth and come out leisure? Mm -hmm. See, that's why I look, I look at, I don't look at him in crazy. I look at the people that are called the call of craziness all over. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need more prescription. Now, don't get me wrong. Fair, fair. Madison is here for a reason. Yeah. But we let medicine take over what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do. Yeah. Right. Now, if he's supposed to take medicine, take it. That's right. But what happens to believing in the power of God? Yeah. The giftings of God. Yeah. Um, the school me and my mama both graduated, and Annie Toy graduated from. We had to um, do a class, and in one of the classes, he said that if God has not blessed that surgeon's hand, that surgeon is not going to do what he's supposed to do. Yeah. That's how people can have surgeries and die on the table. Yeah. Because his hand was not blessed. Yeah. Did he even know the Lord? Yeah. Here you are, a child of God, being right. operated on by somebody that's, that don't even believe in anything. Right. Right. Oh, man. All right. All right. If the person that invented the medicine don't believe in God in medicine, mm -hmm. what am I saying? God is in control of it all. Yes, but because he loved us, he gave us the ability to control what he has placed us in. Yes. Look deep. It's dangerous. If you don't drink deep. That's right. That's right. A little bit of knowledge. So drink deep, my friends. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Yeah. All right. When I look around, I look at your faces. I see beautiful. I see people that's going to help make a change. Yeah. When I look at the kids in here, I see hope. Mm -hmm. I see brightness. Someone that faces are so bright. You ever know when you smile, they, they bright up so much? Mm -hmm. They're so bright. Yeah. Bring your kids in here. You got to get them to understand their gifts. Yes. But I also see they have come from generations and generations and generations of nasty things. But we live in a world that say, get over it. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. It's not the fact that we don't get over it. It's the fact that we have that mentality that they say, just get over it. Yeah. But then my question is to you, who are they? I know that. That's what Africans say, who are you? You are not my father. You are not God. You are not what they made me. That's an African to tell you out, but if, if, if they did the same thing to Africans, look, we would have been done with that. That it was in slavery, four hundred boy Africans, but they killed some stuff quick. You are not God. I love that saying right there. You did not give me the guiltings. You did not make me wake up and go and build that building. That was God that woke me up and allowed me to stand on my own feet. And if I came back here, allowed me to use my arms to push myself around. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, we live in a culture that we have to use our gifts to change. Yes. You have to change the culture from the inside out, not the outside in. We got to stop worrying about what they say about us and stop worrying about what we say about ourselves. We gotta let them deal with themselves. Cause see, they got some stuff. Every culture has some stuff they gotta deal with. Amen. And then see, we, we point the finger and we point when we do the blame game. Every culture Amen. has something they need to deal with. My bronze, complected people. All right. Amen. We're guilty for a reason. Yes. Sir. So it's in your hands. Yes. I don't want to hear complaints. 
I want to hear a murmur. I want to hear a solution. Right. See, because we're ambassadors. Right. Ambassadors, if you see something wrong, That's right. you find a solution for it. Right. You don't bring the problem. Right. You bring the solution. Right. Give it to the people. Right. We're different. We serve the same Father, the same Son, and the same Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. I love y'all. This is a home for you. We love you. We want you here. We believe in you. This is a place where you can get training. This is a place where you can feel love. This is a place where you can feel God's presence from the moment you walk in. Yes, yes, we want you here with us, family. Amen. And if you have a church home, bless your church home and thank you for visiting. Yes. But you're always welcome at The Rock ATL. Yes. Make sure you choose the Rock ATL East Point. 